and um, today I would like to talk to you about uh, Sigmund Freud and a lot of people call him Uncle Freud and in Russia we call him Grandpa Freud. Uh, I don't know why but um, American people call him Uncle Freud, Russian people call him Grandpa Freud. And if you ask, um, if I ask you or any group to name the most famous psychologist, the majority will say his name. And Sigmund uh, Freud was born on May 6, 1856 uh, in a Jewish family. And he spent most of his life in Vienna, uh, Austria. And uh, then he escaped to London and died in London on September 23rd, 19. 39. It was the beginning of uh, World War II and Nazis began to occupy the area where he lived. And he was a celebrity uh, in his time. People recognized him on the street and he had uh, huge ambitions. He was often dishonest, extremely brutal to his friends and terrible to his enemies. But he was uh, a genius. And he was the founder, the father of psychoanalysis, uh, which is one of the biggest branches of psychology. Freud was the first who said that our unconscious motives control our behavior. Uh, not us, not our brain, not our mind. Our unconscious mind controls our behavior. And psychoanalysis is a method of uh, treating people through dialogue between um, a patient and a therapist. And he was the father, the founder of this method. And he was uh, um, extremely brutal and he was a genius. And at the same time, people hate him for his views and his theory. He is known not for one theory, but for several theories that he brought to the world of psychology. And some theories are terrific and some uh, received many criticism. And one of the most criticized theory is the theory of uh, penis envy. And according to Freud, all female went through um, the desire to have a penis during childhood. The idea was that a little girl thought that once she had, once she had a penis, and someone took it from her. And this uh, is uh, uh, the psychological trauma that every woman uh, got in her childhood. And the girl loves uh, her father because uh, he has a penis and she rejects her mother because she does not have a penis. This is how um, enemies would describe uh, Freud theory. And this explanation, of course, is not going to make you respect him or have a good opinion of him. Another highly criticized theory is his uh, dreams interpretation theory. Uh, in his uh, theory, he, um, he offers to look at your dreams as uh, symbols uh, either penis or vagina. And um, basically, the interpretation is based on, two, on those two symbols. And yet, uh, people still uh, say that he's the father of psychology because he was uh, the first who was talking about the existence of the unconscious. Unconscious motivation, unconscious desire, and unconscious conflicts. To make it simple, it's not you who are making the decisions, it's your unconscious mind who does everything for you. And you have no idea of what or why do you think or make specific decisions in your life. Uh, let's say you fall in love uh, with a man and you're ready to get married. And if someone uh, is asking you why, a woman can say uh, something like, uh, I love him. Mm, I like him, I'm ready to move uh, to the next chapter of my life, uh, he's smart, he's attractive, uh, he has potential, I want to have kids with him, I can see myself with him for the rest of my life. 
And the Freud would say that even if this woman uh, was honest and she is not lying, but still she has desires and motivations uh, inside her um, unconscious mind that guide her and that make her go through mm, this experience and she is not even aware of it. And those uh, hidden true desires might be because this guy reminds her her father or maybe he wants to get she wants to get back uh, back on uh, somebody who betrayed her or she feels fear of loneliness and it's so huge and um, marriage kids and family mm, is a symbol for her or is the situation that's gonna prevent her from this um, loneliness in the future so those fears feelings and motivations are hidden from her in her unconscious mind and um, the main idea the main Freud's idea was that people don't know their true desires they don't know why they do this uh, or another thing and as if you can see on this um, slide on the image the white part is what we understand is what we know it's like uh, he is handsome he is nice i think he's a great man we have same common values and below the big huge part of you uh, this is the actual um, reasons why you're making this decision and uh, examples can be um, um, the following have you ever liked somebody without understanding why for example you uh, you've met someone and you don't know this person yet but you like him already or uh, maybe you uh, remember you can remember a situation where you did something or you argued with somebody or you said something and then when you're thinking about this situation you don't really know why did you do this you know why you became so angry or maybe you had dreams and you cannot explain why you had those dreams who uh, are those people from your dreams and why uh, in your dream you did this or that and Freud explains it, he is saying that our true desires, our true fears and our true motivations are hidden from us and we are not aware of them and yet they control our lives. And all of this would be nice and would be fine if uh, our unconscious mind would be smart and would be looking for our best interest. But according to Freud, it's not uh, how it works. According to Freud, there are three uh, elements, three processes uh, that are going in your uh, head and create internal conflicts. And uh, um, you can ask a question, so who you are, what, uh, um, how can you treat yourself, how can you understand yourself if anything is hidden in our unconscious mind. And let's talk about those three elements. And uh, the elements are id, which is hidden in our unconscious. Then uh, we have ego and we have super ego. And if you look at this image, uh, this white line, this is the line between conscious and unconscious. And we also have uh, the layer which is pre-conscious. So basically, Unconscious is what we know, what we understand. Unconscious and is what we don't know, completely uh, don't understand. And um, this is these things are hidden from our awareness. And we have the layer in between. And uh, those things that we can understand, they just um, beneath the surface of awareness. So when you come for therapy or when you come for self-development workshop, we usually work on this level. And um, the id, the biggest part of the iceberg, 
is present at birth. It is our animal part. It wants to eat, drink, poop, get warm and have sexual satisfaction. And it works on what Freud called the pleasure principles. It wants pleasure and wants it now. And according to Freud, a human is born as a pure id, the pure desire for pleasure. In reality, you can't always get what you want, right? We have, we have a song like, you can't always get what you want. And as a result, we um, either plan how to satisfy our desire or we are uh, thinking how to suppress them, how to ignore them. And the system that helps us to suppress our desire or to satisfy our desire is called ego or self. And ego uh, has a border with it, so it does connect with it. It has like a connection between uh, the conscious and sub unconscious mind. And ego, uh, we, uh, there are biggest part of, not biggest, like let's say, uh, there are a big part of ego that we can understand. We know we are aware of it. And there is some part that is hidden from us, but it's very close to our awareness level. And when we have like, oh, I got an insight. This usually insight comes from this lower part of ego. And ego works on reality principles. So it works on the principle of pleasure. And ego is all about the reality. And ego goal is either find the way how to satisfy the desires that we have in it, the hidden desires, or how to give up on them. And ego is part of our consciousness. This is what we think. This is what we, our logic, and the ego is the part that makes decisions and basically ego decides what, when and how. And yet it is controlled by the id. This is the algorithm. Ego decides what to do and the, uh, the true desire, the true motivation is hidden beneath it by it. Um, and it's not ends here. Freud introduces us as the third component, which is super ego. And on the picture is this part on the right side. And the super ego is connected with ego and with id. And super ego is uh, uh, simultaneously located on three levels. levels. Conscious level, pre-conscious level, and unconscious level. Uh, so, angel or little devil. Uh, it is like a um, little devil and super ego is like a little um, angel who sits uh, on our shoulder. And super ego is our internal rules uh, which were given to us by our parents. So, uh, by the society, and it's basically what is wrong, what is right, the understanding what I should do, what I should not do, how should I behave, and how I should not behave. Uh, and the child is growing uh, up and wants to satisfy his desire, but desires, but sometimes he gets punished for them. Mm. His desires might be inappropriate or his actions might be wrong. For example, a child wants to poop, uh, but he cannot do it. He has to wait. He, you cannot poop in your pants. Like, or a child wants an ice cream and he sees a girl uh, with an ice cream. He wants to take it from her. But super ego, which at that time is a parent, say, no, you should not behave this way. You know, you should wait. You cannot take stuff from other people. And then within time, this uh, super ego component uh, becomes internalized. And uh, now we hear our parents' voices, our teachers' voices, our society voices inside of us. And super ego is another part of our consciousness, something that we can realize, something that we can control. We're aware of this super ego, of these um, norms and rules that we have. And super ego is like a little agent. It's like a teacher in school who is telling you what you should do and what you should not do. 
super e uh, and ego basically when you have it on one shoulder and super ego on the other shoulder your ego is in between and ego does not know what to do either to satisfy your desires or to follow the super ego rules uh, so ego has a very hard and difficult job and the it says i want to eat have fun and have sexual pleasure and super eager is saying uh, you should be ashamed of yourself this is disgusting stop doing it and ego is like oops what should i do and according to freud we don't even realize those process uh, and we cannot control it according to freud those process are hidden from us and it works like a uh, our external internal organs like kidney heart or stomach we know about them but we cannot really control them and it is something that we have at our birth and ego and super ego we develop in childhood the next um, biggest thing that freud brought to the world of psychology is his psychosexual theory of human development so the first part was about our hidden desires and the second part is about how our ego was developed how our super ego was developed about the conflicts between the ego and super ego and about four stages that every child every one of us went through and how those stages affected our adulthood and he uses the term psychosexual stages he believed the child's life is built around uh, the concept of tension and pleasure and he called pleasure as a libido energy too much tension uh, too much uh, control and we have a fixation fixation is his word which means too much tension basically and this fixation has a lasting effect in our childhood each stage uh, has some specific conflict that the child should resolve and freud believed that the first five years of our life is crucial to form our adult personality and uh, those five uh, st uh, there are five stages which he um, offered to the world of psychology and you can remember them by a phrase uh, old age parrots live grapes old stands for oral stage uh, age stage for anal stage when the person um, is going through the potty training parents stands for phallic stage uh, love stands for uh, latent period or latent stage and grapes stands for genital stage and um, later freud's follows expanded this theory and i will share with you uh expanded version and also add my explanation uh and we'll try to find the simple words to describe uh this complicated psychological theory when people come to the therapist they want to understand themselves and in order to understand ourselves we have to go back to our childhood and the first stage that freud was talking about is the oral stage he um, did not talk about the uh, uh, prenatal period his theory starts from the oral stage and oral stage or oral fixation or oral type of personality is formed at the age uh, from zero to 18 months uh, basically the first year year and a half of, of baby's life and the focus of libido uh, the part of the body where a baby receives the biggest pleasure is mouth the baby receives pleasure by sucking milk or by chewing objects taking out from the mother's breast too early can lead to a serious problems later a person might have problems with the weight uh, all type of eating disorder forms here uh, alcoholism, smoking, uh, biking, biting pencils, mm, oral people with oral type of personality are trying to achieve satisfaction through their mouth. 
And because uh, the child is completely dependent on his mother or his caretaker, this is the period when the baby develops a sense of trust and comfort. And the first uh, emotional contact is a reciprocal smile uh, when, which happens between first and second month of baby's life. Anxiety uh, of losing mother develops at seven months. So uh, the baby um, at the earliest stage before, like on, on the first or second month, he um, can treat uh, basically any adult as his mother. But uh, when he is about six to seven months old, he can um, identify his mother and he can uh, experience stress and fear and anxiety if mother is leaving him for a long period of time. And long period of time is like a day, two days a week or more than a week, right? Um, a fear of strangers is formed at about at, at about eight months old and um, the child becomes extremely sensitive to develop any type of anxiety or fears or stress at seven to nine months months old so it's very important for mommy to be with her baby during the first nine months of his life and at this age, we form um, the following beliefs. The, the world is a safe place or the world is a dangerous place. It's not a safe place. And I cannot trust this world. My life is not safe. The second belief is that uh, the world is uh, an abundant place. Uh, I, have, I can get anything I want. The world has unlimited resources or the world has limited resources and I have to fight for those resources. It's not enough for everyone. And the third belief is I cannot trust people or I can trust people. Basically, if my mom is always here for me, if she satisfied, satisfies my desires, then I can trust other people. If uh, the child uh, was uh, separated from his mother, then most likely he will develop a belief that I cannot trust other people and he will have a trust issues later uh, when he will try to create a relationship, love and romantic relationship in his life. Uh, mother supposed to hold her baby while breastfeed or bottle feeding. This is also how baby develops his first fundamental ability to connect with other people through connection with his mother. And as a result, again, if uh, mother did not hold the baby, if he did not feel her body, then uh, when the baby grows up, he might develop a trust issues and he might struggle with creating a friendship and uh, um, loving, caring, romantic relationship. This type of baby is gonna grow up into an adult who will have difficulties of creating emotional deep contact with other people. He might become a victim of toxic relationship. He might end up in a relationship with a narcissistic person and he might uh, Mm, feel himself as a victim and be aggressive towards other people. Uh, the fixation on this stage, basically when uh, the baby did not receive enough milk, when uh, the baby had a problem with sucking a mother nipple, or when mother did not generate enough milk, or maybe the uh, maybe mother did generate enough milk but baby had the problem with the sucking it or maybe if he didn't have enough milk and he had to be aggressive and suck harder uh, or maybe the mother was not holding the baby all of those things will create an oral fixation and oral fixation is a term which will lead to oral type of personality people or uh, fixation means that uh, a child had too much tension, too much stress, too much anxiety at this uh, period in his life. And uh, let's talk a little bit about the oral type of personality. And we can uh, divide uh, people into groups, people with this type of personality. 
and um, it can be passive depends de dependency or aggression personality. Uh, passive dependency is smoking or any type of oral fixation, oral addiction, alcohol, uh, gum, uh, biting nails, uh, mm, biting uh, any pencils, like any type of fixation uh, which we have around the mouth. Eating disorder, overeating or not eating enough. And we will talk about uh, eating uh, disorders and eating mechanism uh, on next uh, Thursday, next webinar, which is called Overeating and the Inner Child. This is all about the oral type of personality. Uh, if you cannot control uh, the amount of food that you eat, if you um, uh, go into the refrigerator and cannot stop yourself, then uh, please come to the next webinar. I will tell you about eight reasons why people do this. We're going to talk about this specific fixation in details. Um, passive dependency also can... Um, can be uh, we can see it as a love addiction people who end up in toxic relationship the victim behavior dependent uh, uh, relationship where the person uh, depend on other person relationship with a narcissist and long distance relationship unrequited love also is here and the second type of uh, oral personality is aggressive uh, behavior aggressive dependency and uh, uh, is when a ch when a child was sucking uh, mommy's nipple and did not get enough milk or the milk was not fat enough wasn't did not have enough and green enough minerals or vitamins right so a baby became angry and aggressive and the child develops the belief system that in order for me to get what I want, in order for me to survive, basically, not just to get what I want. I want milk. I need milk in order to survive. So in order, in order for me to survive, I must be aggressive. I must be aggressive to achieve my goals. I must be aggressive to get from one destination to B, uh, from destination A to B. Examples, a person who creates fights out of anything, a person who likes to eat meat on a bone, like chicken wings with a bone, chips, any type of hard food, um, nuts, chewing gums, it's, it's like aggressive type of behavior, of uh, movement, aggressive movement, like meat from the bone. Um, a person who likes aggressive sport like MMA, boxing, wrestling, because the oral type of personality is based on the contact between mother and the child. And if the if mother was not holding the child, uh, as a result, we have a person who wants to have in close contact, aggressive close contact. And this is your martial arts, right? MMA, boxing, wrestling, close, aggressive contact, aggressive type of personality. Um, a, another example, a person who bites his nails or bites pencils, a person who uh, has desires of uh, fighting, of argument, and a person who likes to argument. A person who uses sarcasm a lot, uh, uh, offensive jokes, it's like biting with your words, with your mouth, biting, sarcasm. And a person who likes to use others to meet his own needs. And uh, again, uh, on the online training, the third week, we're going to talk about parents' love as a foundation for a happy life. And again, uh, we're gonna talk, we're gonna do the meditation, right? The child wants to be protected, to be loved and to be happy. We're gonna talk about the divine parents uh, and exercise the divine parents uh, and how important is it to feel that your life and you are important for your parents. And we're gonna do an exercise where you can actually feel that and you can experience that feeling. And it's going to be the foundation for your inner child, the foundation for healing your uh, childhood trauma. 
and we're gonna do the exercise uh, the divine egg and you will be able to reborn to go and experience these feelings of new life and you're gonna reborn into the world uh, which is an abundant loving place so the anal stage or anal type of personality uh, we go through this stage when we are we went through the stage when we were like between year and a half and three years old and the focus of libido and again this is the part of the body where child receives the biggest pleasure pleasure is anus and um, the child must learn how to control his bodily needs the ability to control his body and this stage is where uh, the child uh, develops a sense of control a sense of accomplishment and independence if uh, the child went uh, through the stage successfully then he grows up into a com competent adult a person with good self-esteem uh, a person who can control himself a person who can control his life a person who can control money a person who can create gold uh, goals and a person who is successful financially and people who had uh, fixation on this stage uh, and fixation is formed when parents were too controlling uh, when parents did not reward the child for learning how to use a potty those people develop anal type of personality and children who had problems with the constipation or diarrhea might develop two types of personality it can be an obsessive controlling behavior or a person with a messy type of personality person who cannot be in charge of anything so there are two opposite type of personality and obsessive controlling behavior uh, is the fixation on holding feces when the person had too much stress a child had too much stress too much fixation too much tension on holding his feces when the child was uh, trying so hard uh, to to hold his feces in order not to poop to his pants and uh, uh, as an adult we might see a person who wants uh, to control everything everything should be on its place uh, on its order mm, a person with OCD personality disorder a person who has a spotless house a woman who has a spotless kitchen everything is organized at, in at her kitchen in her kitchen uh, a person with a spotless office uh, a woman with a spot or oh, a man with a perfect closet where clothing uh, is sorted by type and color mm. a person who likes to be in control who never late uh, and he might actually get angry if he's late he will feel shame and he is not okay when other people are late he's gonna judge other people for being late uh, here we're gonna have a person who spends money only on necessary things uh, who likes to save money um, and he might even have a hard time of spending money on himself he will not buy expensive stuff because it's waste of money unless it's uh, ex absolutely necessary and here we're also gonna have a good girl syndrome or good boy syndrome uh, it's desire to be perfect desire to be good desire to be the best in everything and the person who is gonna intellectualize and rationalize uh, his uh, decisions his life and this person is um, not gonna be any these people are not usually creative people because they have to block the creativity creativity is when you let things go the way they are you open and you have no expectations then you create new things like an artist or musician or a dancer and those people they are always in control they cannot uh, just relax and let things go and another uh, type uh, of anal personality is uh, an opposite a, a messy person a person who cannot be in charge or who hate to be in charge 
and also the fixation uh, uh, fixation means tension right fixation was on uh, this party training stage when the person um, was uh, uh, fixated on letting go on of his feces um, and as an adult we see a person who cannot save money a shopaholic a people who always in debt or people who can barely survive between salaries uh, we might have a person who struggles uh, with planning his life planning in advance his family vacations holidays parties a person who cannot uh, organize things, uh, a person who cannot keep his word, uh, who will change his opinion often, uh, a person with a super messy closet, uh, who has uh, a messy car, a complete mess in his car, and um, a women, women who have a uh, mess in their purses. And um, this... Uh, fixation it can be deep or it can be shallow so uh, maybe you are a well organized person at work but when you come home your home is a mess so it means that you had fixation on this stage but it did not affect it all your life but because you had a fixation on this stage at home you are a total mess and again during the uh, healing uh, the inner child workshop we're gonna work on uh, transformation of those feelings of trans uh, we're gonna transform the fixation we're gonna heal uh, this fixation and it's gonna be an exercise a toad in a swamp and we're gonna release your hidden aggression because fixation is always about aggression i will talk about it a little bit later and we're gonna learn how to release your aggression and how to overcome all those shoulda woulda coulda i have to i must to uh and allow yourself to desire what you want accept uh, allow yourself to accept your body and to love yourself to love your body uh, and we're gonna do an exercise which is called I can and we're gonna talk ab about the ability to be the boss of your own life and to live by your own rules and make uh, be responsible for the decisions that you make and anal aggression aggression can be formed when a toddler has too much tension too much stress during party training when he cannot hold um, his feces or he cannot release his feces he becomes angry and the fixation of uh, on this stage can lead to uh, masochism and uh, the masochism is the mechanism of uh, enduring a pain or sadism and sadism is an uncontrolled desire to cause pain to other person or an animal and here again uh, a person can develop two type of fixation it can be squandering or savings and the person often feel angry with himself for that for uh, being too controlling or uh, for being squandered and behind this aggression uh, is the aggression on parents for example a child gets angry when uh, a parent says something like this until you poop you're not gonna play until you poop you're not gonna watch tv no devices until you finish pooping or uh, if the child pooping his pants a, a parent might say uh, something like shame on you you are a big boy why can't you learn how to use potty and the mother or father is shaming uh, his child and the child feels angry but he cannot feel angry towards his parent so he feels angry towards himself so this is uh, inner aggression and uh, because he cannot feel angry towards his parent another way he's gonna be angry towards other people again a child might be mm, quiet at home but when he goes to school he might become violent because this anger that he 
feels inside, he cannot release it to parents. He's going to release it to other people. Mm. And as a result, we might have an anger person or a person who is uh, always looking for permission, for advice. Uh, for example, a woman who constantly calls calls her husband, uh, her parent, her girlfriend, and she has to discuss every decision that she is making. Uh, in reality, this type of uh, woman or this type of person is looking for a permission. She is afraid to make her own decision. So she is looking for parental permission for a parent who, parent who is going to support her. And um, she did not have it in her childhood. So she is gonna, going to replay this, um, um, this scenario in her adult life. Uh, a person develops self-criticism and negative self-talk, inner aggression. If the child was not able to release this aggression on other kids or on other people, he's going to be angry and it's going to be inner aggression, hidden inner aggression, self-criticism and negative talk. And fixation on this stage can also lead to sexual problems. Uh, because sex involves different smells, fluids, sounds, in order to experience an orgasm, you have to relax, you have to let go of your guards, you have to allow all those smells, fluids and sounds to be part of your sex life. And the person, he either cannot allow it, he is in control, he cannot relax, or the person or, uh, is afraid. Uh, if it's a woman, she might be afraid or, or that the person will think something bad about her or she's going to be judged and she will be tense. And if she is tense, uh, then she cannot have orgasm. And I would like to uh, invite you again to the eight weeks of online training uh, where we're gonna work with the aggression and we're gonna do an exercise that's called four ways to respond to rudeness. And I will share with you four options, four ways how you can talk to rude people. And I will explain uh, which way is working in which situation. And I will share with you specific phrases that you can use if somebody is uh, um, talking in a rude way to you or somebody is crossing your boundaries. And we're also going to talk about uh, inner fears, hidden inner fears and hidden anxieties. And we're going to do an exercise that's called meeting your inner monster. And you will have an opportunity uh, to meet your inner monster in order to feed him, in order to calm him down. So you're not going to feel so anxious, so stressful in your real life. Then we're going to do the meditation, which is called the source of my strength. And I will show you, I will teach you how to open your internal uh, channel, internal source of your strength and abundance. And we're going to do an amazing um, exercise, uh, uh, which called overcoming the fear of great spider. And uh, a spider is a symbol of um, kids, uh, of children's fear, of children's anxiety. And we're going to do an exercise that will help you to overcome this fear and leave all your fears in your past. And I would like to invite you to the online training. And if, if you click on the link below this video, you can see um, um, the program of the training. You can see the topics. And I always I offer four ways to participate. And we're gonna meet once a week online. We're gonna do exercise, and we're gonna work with within two months so you can actually heal and connect with your inner child and they offer discounts and if you register today or within the next two days you will receive 15 percent discount you can also uh, invite your friends and both of you will get 25 percent off and if you share uh, this video or uh, the link to this training on your social media you will get five percent for each link that you share okay i am gonna be happy to see you uh, next uh, tuesday 
at oh, my alarm is ringing next Tuesday at 8 a.m. Los Angeles time, Pacific time. And uh, we will talk, we will continue this uh, webinar and I will be answering your questions at the end of the webinar. So please join me. It's going to be next uh, Tuesday at 9 a.m. And next Thursday, again at 9 a.m., we're going to talk about uh, eating problem, overeating problem, extra weight, and the inner child. Again, my name is uh, Elena Semenek, and this is Psychology of Happiness, where happiness is the purpose of life. If you want to change your life, if you want to be happier, uh, more successful, uh, have more joy and create love and healthy relationship, you are in the right place. I welcome you to my new, I welcome you to my channel and I will be happy to see you on my next webinars. Okay, bye-bye. See you next time.